a lot of you asked why we didn't release the episode last week. Our family has faced a devastating loss. Please keep Francesco Buccino in your thoughts and prayers. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Thank I you mean, for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. Of course. We've been talking about doing this a long time. We have. And um, I want to start by saying Francesco Lopresti was one of the funniest, nicest kids I've met. Um, he adored you. Yeah, he um, did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a uh, quick story of um, how I, I mean, I came across him on social media and I don't remember like our first interactions, but I remember he would always be like, I want to do stuff with you. Yeah. I'm like, so come do stuff with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but I got to see if my girlfriend is okay <laughs> with it and she could come. I'm like, bro, what are you, who cares what your girlfriend says? Just go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, off the rip, he, uh, I remember I invited him because we were going back and forth so many times about doing stuff together. And um, I had that uh, song come out with our friend at DJ's and he came by that day and uh, he was doing like, um, the car stuff. Tri- yeah, like, uh, you know, a little, he was like being a menace on this block going up and down. And we're like, no, we need it again. We need it no, again. He was so excited. You guys wanted to use his car. Yeah. That was so fun. That day was so fun. And I saw him, a, I believe I saw him another time. Cause then after that, we came here. Yep. We had a time. Yeah. I remember spoon. you guys took like a picture by the yeah. wall. We made a TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was first, how did you and Francesco meet? So I actually met him when I was younger at my dance studio. He was a break dancer and I was, he was a break dancer. He was, and he was fire and all the girls loved him always. This was in Bay Ridge. This was in Bensonhurst. So right near like L and B. Okay. And then, um, he ended up getting kicked out of a dance studio because his grades were bad. His parents took him out Mm. and, then we just met back up in high school, and it was kind of history from there. Did you guys go to the same high school? No, but my best friend went to the high school, and she like came home one day, and like right when they started freshman year, and she's like, "There, everybody's obsessed with this kid named Francesco." And I'm like, "Let me see his Instagram page," and I was like, "I know him," and it was him from the dance studio, and like I was like, "I'm gonna come pick you up from school," like I just want to see him, and then uh, when I went to pick him up, so you pursued him. I pursued him. Oh, I was because I missed my chance when he left for dance. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I how old were you him. during dance? Like we were like 11, 12 years old. Oh wow, super yeah. young, super young. You were already thinking about love at eleven. Yeah, and 12. <laughs> I was on top of it. It was weird, and then I really didn't think that I was going to see him again. And like everything kind of worked out when we were fifteen. And he was like, "I remember you." And so I'm you like, guys yeah? started officially dating at like fifteen. Mm-hmm. That first interaction where you were pursuing him, what was? Do you remember the conversation? Briefly, like I remember just when he said to me, he was like, I know your face from somewhere. And I was like so excited because I didn't know that he like knew me. Mm-hmm. And um, he was like, did you go to a dance studio? And I'm like, yeah. And then we kind of just like hit it off. And he was like, I'll take you out on a date. And the date was like going to Dwayne Reed and like picking out snacks and just like walking around the neighborhood with a skateboard. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He was a little skateboard head. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know. I would never think that. I know. Right. Yeah. He doesn't give that vibe. Yeah, but he used to skateboard everywhere. And trains, we take trains everywhere, but um, he was the best. Yeah, he he was great. He was so good. So, you, do you remember what you got at Dwayne Reed that day? Like, what snacks? I do. I think he got like, I want to say he got like. First of all, he asked me what I wanted. He knew what he was doing with the ladies. He always like he was like, "You pick what you want," and I got some pretzels, and we were just like walking with our snacks, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna kiss you." Like he was just, he was, he was like, ready. he was ready to go. Yeah, like but you I was were ready, ready too because I was you ready were pursuing to her. talk, but I don't know about the kiss. Like I was nervous, but he was in the field, I guess, a little quicker than me. You so know? You, you kissed him the first day. The first day. There. And then. But 15, that's super innocent. Like, you know, that he young was love. innocent, but you know, after that day, I had a girl like DM me. was like, are you talking to Francesco? And I'm like, are you? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, Francesco. So it already started yeah. like that. Yeah. He was a little uh, pimp. But then so everything. what happened with that? Did you have to like beat the girl up or anything? I didn't have to beat her up. But then I'm like, listen, like we're already starting off on a bad foot. And he's like, no, no, no. Let me prove myself. So I'm like, okay. And then he would like come and pick me up from dance because I was still going. Mm-hmm. And then like one of the times he was like, he ended up, like, not showing up, and he's like, I forgot. I'm like, what happened? I thought we were, like, starting off on a good foot, and he's like, let me try one more time. At that, at that age, like, the little things mean so much. Oh, my God. Like, forgetting, uh, 
Like, even if you like postpone plans back then, it's like the biggest, biggest deal, deal in the, the world. world. Yeah. Now it's so. like, sorry, you got to be more understanding. I think that's like what made our relationship like so beautiful because there was just so much like mistakes that were made or like there was just so much like evolution, like who he ended up being and me, like where we started versus like who we ended up becoming together. Mm -hmm. Because like a lot of people always like, we always say like, oh, like your relationship was so perfect. And I'm like, it always wasn't like that. Like there was so much more to it, you know? Yeah. And I don't think a no lot of No relationship's people, perfect though. No relationship's perfect. And I just don't think a lot of people are willing to kind of not stick it out because if shit's like really, really bad, like you'll know, but like at least give it some more, you know, time to see like what's up. There's a lot of temptation nowadays. You know, Social the, the, media. Yes. Bad. Like, uh, bad. there's always, uh, you know, a guy in a girl's DMs, even if they have a boyfriend, like, pursuing them. And, True. You know, we could, like, have an argument with someone you're with, and right away there's temptation. Like, you just had it ready for you. You could just, you just got to answer a message. True. And, and also, someone. like, if you're in a relationship and, like, you guys, like, are fighting and then like somebody wants to go out and they're like posting to be spiteful. Like it's all just like yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. big toxic it's all fake. game. All fake. And I always say too, it's like when you're like posting that, like you want the, the person that like you're crying over to think that you're like thriving and then they think that you're thriving and they don't think you don't care. And it's like all that to just not say like what you really feel. Mm -hmm. Like what's the point, you know? Yeah. yeah it's like, uh, whoever cares, whoever cares less wins almost literally. And then it's like, but that person ends up losing. Yeah. Because, because you're not really showing how you really feel. Exactly. So, how soon did you start, like, meeting his family? And Because you guys kissed on the first date. Did you meet his family on the second date? We kissed on the date? first date. But, so, he used to go to Taekwondo. And his Taekwondo school was, like, right around the corner from my house. Which was a bad, bad thing. Because he would end up ditching going to Taekwondo to come hang out with me. I thought you were going to say, like, he was all pumped up because he learned these moves and he's using Well, that guy. too. <laughs> He'd be like, yo, come watch me. And, like, I would see him, like, breaking, like, wood with his head. I was oh, like, really? I don't want to come to this show. This is, like, disturbing. I didn't really understand it until, like, I started to really understand it. But um, one day when I went to see him, his parents, his, he asked his mom and dad, he was like, can we drive my girlfriend home? And I was like, I got in a car mm -hmm. and I met them for the first time. And they liked me, but, like, they're like... Is she full Italian? And that was when the whole spiel happened of, like, his parents wanting, like, that full Italian background. And, like, mm -hmm. I didn't really have that. Wait, are you... What, what, you're full... You're half Italian. I'm right? half Italian and half Irish. Okay. And I think that was kind of, like, what also was so beautiful about our relationship because he was always stuck in, like, this is how things are supposed to be. And, like, I was like, mm, I don't think so. And we kind of, like, found that middle point. Like, in what, in what way? Do you have an example? Oh, my God. There's like, he wanted you to, like... Clean the dishes kind of thing? or <laughs> Kind of. Or <laughs> like even like, okay, we go and get Chinese food. And I'm like, all right. So we come home and I start opening the bag and I'm putting my food down. He's like, no, no, no. We got to get like a tablecloth. I'm uh. like, but uh, why do we got to? That's mad dramatic. Like, why do I need to put? So it was just like the little things where he had like specific ways or like, you know what? Like, let's wait for everybody to come home and wait to eat. But I'm like, but I'm hungry. I want to eat now. Uh. He's like, but we got to wait. And it's just like. It was interesting to see how there was, like, such a system. Do you think there was a, a Francesco test? Like, Francesco does? What do yeah, you like, you ever saw um, Bronx Tale, like, the Mario test? I never like, seen it. No? You never no, saw No, I need to go watch it. All right, know. so I'll give you, like, a give quick a, a quick, a quick version. So this guy, uh, this kid's going on a, his first big date, okay. and uh, Chaz Palmateri says, like, oh, well, first it was one of his friends is like, says, you got to give her the test. Okay. And it... And it was uh, like very raunchy test. I'm not going to spoil it because you got to watch the movie. All right. Now then I he goes to an it. older guy and he's like, whatever. He goes, don't listen to that kid's test. He's an idiot. Like when she, um, when you get in the car, if she leans over to open the door for you, okay. she's the one. Okay. So in the movie, like whatever he, he see, like he's walking behind the car. He sees her lean over and he's like, yes. <laughs> so in uh, uh, that question, I'm saying like, do you think there was, like, one thing that right away he knew? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, it's like, what things that I would say we There's look so for many. is, like, cleaning after uh -huh. we eat, like, helping your mom clean the table or, you know, stuff like yep. that. Like, literally, like, when we're done at the table and, like, I would see that, like, him and his dad would kind of, like, stay put and his mom would get up and, like, take everything off. And, like, at first, like, I was comfortable. Like, I was staying because my mom and would do everything. And he's like, babe. 
like yeah. go like I'm like oh and I like grab the plates and like join in like I was trying to like it wasn't because I didn't like that my ways of showing respect was different than theirs and like mm-hmm. so it was kind of like how do I understand like what they look for like what's their expectations and mm-hmm. that in itself was kind of a challenge but like it really like shaped me like there was things that like I learned from them that like I still do because you're so young you don't even know like because you have your parents take care we of were you so young yeah, yeah like even um when I come in the house like greet them give them like a little kiss on the cheek and I'm like well I'm not really affectionate I don't really want to go up to them and go yeah. like, I'll wave like hey you know uh, so there was just things that like I was really trying to like keep up with mm-hmm. so so he was super Italian because I remember like, he spoke Italian every day mm-hmm. do you know where his family was from in Italy uh, yes, yeah, Sicily. Oh, Sicily? Sis- yeah. son? And his mom was from Torino, you said? Um, family's not Italian. I think it is the... Oh, okay. They, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But both his parents were born in Italy, right? Yeah, but he, he liked to say he was only Sicilian. He was very proud of that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. portion, so... I mean, I'm like that, too. I mean, I, I always say I'm from my dad's town because the people in my mom's town are a little crazy. Yeah, what's so, up with him? He thinks that Sicilians are so much like cooler. Like that yeah. was like his thing. Sicilians have a lot of culture, and uh, I mean Sicilians are super <laughs> proud. He's Sicilian, so that's why he's ah, good. So he's like <laughs> mad happy right now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Sicilians are super proud, and they also like I like identify just as Sicilian. Even <laughs> if you ask them, like, "Oh, you're Italian?" No, I'm not Italian. I'm Sicilian. <laughs> you know, yeah, S- exactly. Sicilians are like that. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it he makes sense. He always wanted to take me to Sicily. I never got to go. Sicily's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, I've been there once. Um, best beaches in the world. Yeah. No air conditioning wherever you go, though. There was no air conditioning when I went. I was sweating everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We went to, like, um, a little nonna's house to, like, make fresh pasta. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, do you guys have, like, a fan or air? And they're like, window. And I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. there's no air Meanwhile, it's 100 out. degrees outside. 100 degrees. And they're fine. They were happy-go-lucky. Mm-hmm. So... Guess air conditioning. How did you guys start on social media? Because uh, that's how I came across you guys. Is like uh, you were one of the first like couples I seen like doing these pranks, and yeah. now everybody like a lot of people do it. So many people, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, I was always a social media person. When I was younger, I was Justin Bieber's one less lonely girl. So I started. Wait, like, what is that? So like Justin Bieber like calls a girl up on stage and sings to her. Uh huh. And I was the girl. So when Instagram first came out, like my Instagram like. I think at the time, like, having, like, 2,000 followers. Wait, like, you like, went, like, on a whole tour doing this? No. I was the New York girl. Oh, okay. So, every time he came to New York, he sang to you. And I was actually dating Francesco, and the song Did he get that, jealous about that? Oh, he was so mad. And I'm like, bro, it's like winning the lottery. You can't be mad about this. I'm like, if Ariana Grande calls you on stage, like, what would you do? You would probably get mad, though. I would get so mad. <laughs> so, whatever. But, um... But so yes. how many times did Justin Bieber sing to you? Just once. Oh, that okay. one, I thought, That's what I'm saying. I like, thought like every year when he came around no, New York. No, just the one time and he made a whole spiel and he sings the song like One Less Lonely Girl and Francesco texts me. He's like, I hear you're lonely now. And I'm like, all right. Like, relax. <laughs> <laughs> that's like typical relationships. Though, though. Yeah, like it was a whole spiel and like he was convinced that I kissed him backstage and I did it so I didn't understand. Wait, so how old was Justin Bieber at the time? Was this like baby, baby? Yeah, 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 that time. But um, when he had like the bowl cut and everything, I was sixteen, so he was like nineteen. So he wasn't like too, too young. Yeah. But now he's like a whole different person. Francesco, you should know it would have been illegal anyway. True. Right. Right. Exactly. But he was like, you don't care. But um, so I always had the following, and Francesco ne- really never loved social media. He was just like, it's so toxic. Like I don't understand why you do it. Like what's the point of it? And when I came He just home, wanted to be with you. He just wanted to be with me. Like, yeah. he was really content. Like, he was fine. Like, he he wasn't a person that, like, settled. Like, he wanted, like, an extravagant life. But he really didn't want to be in, like, the social media light. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I came home from college and we found out TikTok, because it was, like, a brand new app, somebody reached out to me and was like, listen, like, when you're, you're on Instagram, all you do is post pictures of yourself. Like, you should get on TikTok. You have a nice personality. And I think people, like, deserve to know, like, who you really are rather mm-hmm. than just being, like, a face. And I just, like, was, like, all right. Like, I posted, like, a thing here and there. And then when COVID happened, me and him, I was, like, can you make one video of me just for fun? And it was, like, some voiceover. And we had fun doing it. And it blew up. And, like, it was kind of history from there. He was, like, oh, I like this. So once he saw the views, he, like, was convinced. At first, he was, like, I don't know. I don't know. And then, like, when he started to see, like, the opportunity, he was, like, I could get used to this. There was actually this one time that they were in Times Square 
and he was driving his car. They were going to Dave and Buster's, and a car pulls up to, next to Francesco's car at the red light, and the girls are like, oh, are you Francesco from TikTok? Yeah. And he got so hyped, and he turned to his boys. He's like, you guys see that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, like, so with all that. Now. Yeah, I mean, when I came across him, he was like, I want to do the Italian stuff, too, because he did, like, some stuff for you. Like, yeah. But he's like, we were doing a similar, like, super stereotypical yeah. Italian-American stuff, and yeah. he was super into it when I met him. He was, and, like, we used to do videos where, like, he would pick words and, like, me pronouncing it versus, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. him pronouncing it. So, yeah. yeah. Nah, he, he was amazing. He was, and it all went downhill. Yeah. But. So, um, tell us, uh, you know, yeah. what. I, I, I know he got cancer. Mm-hmm. But I don't know more than that. I don't know what kind. Like, yeah. He always, he, so he got cancer when he was really, really young and, um, he fought it. It was mm-hmm. fine. All was good. And then recently, probably, I think it was 2021 in September, he was like, we were in LA, we were like doing collabs, like we were thriving, doing like the best that we ever been in like our career so far. And he was like, you know, like my back really hurts. Like I have such back pain. And he like immediately felt like maybe it was cancer. Cause like when you had cancer in the past it's like you're always worried like even like a cut on your finger you could be like is this like am i bleeding because you know you're just have anxiety from it so he he beat it the the first time like he he had it the first time and he he went through all that uh treatment yeah treatments and everything Mm -hmm. and then it came back it came back Uh, the same kind so he had testicular cancer that's where it started and the cancer that you have like what you're originally diagnosed with, technically it's always what your cancer is. So even if he were to get in the lungs, like it would always still be his cancer diagnosis Mm. is testicular. Yes. And when he first got it, it was just his testicular cancer. It spread very little in his lymph nodes Mm -hmm. because, uh, and I don't know, this is just something that unfortunately the doctors just didn't catch it in time. Mm -hmm. So that's why it spread. And then when it came back the second time, which was recently... When he went to the hospital and he had the back pains, the cancer was in his lungs and his liver. And yeah, that was when it was like, when it hit the main organs, it was like, what's going on? Like We've just never seen it that bad before. Mm-hmm. So. And I mean, we're, we're getting close to a year, mm-hmm. right? That's why we're here today. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw, first of all, when you were going through all this, I got to give you a lot of credit because... You didn't post on social media for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And I remember I reached out to you one time, like, how are you? Because mm-hmm. uh, I came by the, um, his wake. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I saw you didn't post for a long time. Like, mm-hmm. and I hope she's all right. And um, you really honored him, like, amazingly. Because once you posted, like, you were just, you grew a lot as a person, I think. Oh, yeah. And I think you um, learned how to deal with what you uh, were feeling. Mm-hmm. And um, I listened to a couple of your shows. I listened to the first two. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, I've never really heard anything like a podcast like that. Mm-hmm. Just something like doesn't, I don't look for, you know, usually I listen to sports, this, you know, com- comedy stuff. And when I heard yours, like, because I knew him, I was like, you know, she really honored him. So that's why we're here today because um, one, he always wanted to be on this show. Two, he was super proud to be Italian, Italian American. So I felt it was just right, you know? Yeah. And um we do have you do have some important dates coming up. Because mm-hmm. this is coming out on Sunday, so um you have no more time. Yeah, yeah it's they, um we're doing his one year mass on March twenty first, twenty fifth. Oh twenty fifth. The yeah. anniversary is the twenty first though. Right. But we wanted to do the mass on a Saturday, so because people work. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, March 25th at 11.30 a.m. at Guadalupe Church in Diker, I believe, right? Diker. Diker, yeah, wait, okay. Bensonhurst. Yeah. So anybody that knew him, if you're watching this, yes, please love go. to have you there. Um, but yeah, no, uh, just taking a year off was like, or 11 was months. Was it a full, it was a full year? It was um, 10 months, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I really couldn't be on social media. Like, I just wanted to just understand everything that happened if I can't even show up for myself, I can't show up to the world. And, um, during that time, I really took time to like sit down, understand everything that happened in a way that I never thought I could. And I made the podcast because to talk it through 
ultimately it was for myself and then like so many people resonated with it and um now i just feel like i'm not as alone and i just hope that a lot of people feel that way too how did you deal with like so many people reaching out to you i'm sure if i reached out to you i'm sure a million other people did so how how was that just you know that support and you know it was amazing um I, it was almost like sad in a way too because I really I just feel like at my age and I I personally just been feeling so almost alone when I go out with my friends or like I try to just get out and be 25 years old because it's like I forgot what it's like to be 25 you know like I feel like I lived like me and Francesco when he was really really sick I was a caretaker and you really just don't feel young anymore like your whole life is kind of feels like it's it gets taken real from it gets you. real it really gets quick. real like you're really like and and so after like living that kind of life like. I just see the world so differently and like things that like we tend to like gossip about at this age, I'm just so uninterested in and I just feel like so isolated. It helped you become an adult much oh quicker. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's a good thing, but it's also like, it's almost like I miss being, not knowing what the world really is about. Cause it could be a dark place. You know, I feel yeah. like when we're young, we're like, Oh, this is amazing. And it's like, no, like real life shit can happen. You're super close with, um, with his family. I mm -hmm. see you guys always post on social media. Yeah. I mean, his two best friends are They're here today. Here. Yeah, I have a really good relationship with them. I think um, we always were, like, close, but I think that when Francesco got really sick and we experienced this chaos together and, like, mm -hmm. helping each other, like, try to figure out what to do next, like, it really brought us together in a way that, like, I never thought we would have, like, this relationship. I don't even know how to explain it. There's just... When you go through something like that with people, like, it's so hard to just not be, like, close. Yeah. You know? Well, you f you also see who's real and oh yeah, who, who, like, will stand by you and who's, like... Definitely. You know, a fair-weather um, friend, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of people, like, you know, like, oh, just come out. Like, just don't worry about it. Or sometimes I'll get comments on social media, like, just forget about it. Like, show me how to forget about it just like that and I'll do it. Like if you have the way, I just feel like a lot of people really don't understand like what it does to your life, you know, yeah. changes you. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give someone? First of all, if you haven't watched any, I mean, listened, you didn't, you didn't do video yet, right? Not yet. So if you haven't listened, I think she'll give a deeper explanation of those yeah. episodes. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, cause I, I remember the first episode, uh, you said how that day the mm -hmm. first day, like what, how it was. And you and me listening, I'm like, wow, this is real, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you haven't listened, please do. But, um, what, what advice would you give to somebody on how to deal with grief? Okay. So I think the number one thing that I would say is that it's such a roller coaster. Like one day you could be really like, okay, the next day you could be like distraught and, it makes you feel like you're going crazy. Like, if you're happy, you feel, like, almost guilty for being happy. You're like, why Why do I feel happy when something bad just happened? And I would just, my advice would be, like, if you're happy, it's okay to be happy. If you're sad, it's okay to be sad. Like, be okay with just, like, being all over the place. Like, that's really what it is, mm -hmm. you know? So. When did you know it was the right time to come back on social media? I think when I started to, like, understand everything that happened, I started to, like have a schedule again, like, okay, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go to gym from this time to this time. And I have this skincare routine again. And I started to see that there was some sort of like schedule again in my life. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I think I can start. I was showing up for myself. I was realizing like, okay, you're getting up and like, you want to do things like mm -hmm. you want to get up and do things like that. You love like social media. Mm -hmm. So like in my, my life, my actual life, I was like, okay, I, I just felt ready. I think in one of your posts, you said like working out was, the, oh my the most God. important thing for you, right? Working out was like the best thing that I could have done. It was like completely, that's all I really did. Work out. And like, I feel like when you physically feel good, you look in the mirror, you're like, you mentally, you're like, you know what? Like we're getting somewhere. Even letting out some stress too, mm -hmm. or your emotions, like letting it out on uh, your workout too, mm -hmm. probably helped so you much. let out some frustrations and. I also feelings. just, it gave me a purpose to, like, get out of bed. Because, like, after, like, he passed away, it was kind of just, like, what's the reason of me even leaving my house? And then it was, like, you know what? Like, I like the gym. Like, I'm going to get up. Like, that's a reason to get out. And then you're outside already. And you're, like, you know what? Like, I'll get some ice cream or I'll go get some pizza. And, like, I'm already out. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives you, like, some sort of push mm -hmm. for life. It gave you um, 
something to keep your mind off of what you were going through. Yeah. Now, you recently went to Italy, right? I did. When when was that? I went the last week of August because my birthday oh, nice. was August 28th. Was that your first time? First time ever there. And it was because he wanted to take me there for my 25th. Yeah, yeah. Where did you go in Italy? We went to um, Positano. Positano. Okay. Positano. Um, and then we went to Rome. Okay. It was so nice. So you landed in Rome and then went to Positano. We did Positano first and then we went to yeah, Rome. Yeah. We finished it there. So what were, how was your experience in Italy? So I knew a couple words before going there. I knew what words did you know? All right. Mi piace. So if I liked something, That's I could tell important. everyone around. Yeah. Crucial. Ciao. Hello. Did you say mi piace like mi that? Mi piace. <laughs> yeah. I also know ti amo. Very important. Okay. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Which, so you know all the important stuff. I knew the important stuff, which you got to be careful who you're saying. I was like, ti amo. And yeah, the guys yeah. were like, ti amo? I was like, oh, no, 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 not ti amo. Not like that. <laughs> like a friend. Exactly. And then, um, di dove say. I don't know why. I just thought I sounded cool saying it. It was like a full yeah. sentence, you know? Yeah. So that was... Uh, so you would ask people where they're from? <laughs> <laughs> and when they would tell me, um, oh, no clue. I don't even know why I was asking because even when I, they answered it, I wouldn't know where yeah. they're from. Yeah. Huh. Just, cool. <laughs> but uh, it got me pretty far. Like, I remember telling Francesco's parents, they're like, listen, like, call us if you need help. Like, talking to someone, we'll talk to them for you. Mm-hmm. I told them, like, they, they were like, you never called when I got home. I'm like, listen, my couple words got me pretty far, all right? As long as I you made could, it like, around. pick what you want to eat, you're good, you know? Yeah, we had, like, a whole little, we had a travel agent, so she kind of, like, set everything up for us. But um, there was one club in Positano only. I don't know if you know, in the Amalfi Coast. And it's called Music on the Rocks. And you just go there every night. It's the only place it was to a, go. It was like a cave? Yes, Yeah. exactly. And, um... We ended up meet. There's like this one guy. He's like the the Godfather there, and he owns like the whole strip. Mm-hmm. We made friends with him. We were good to go. Yeah, yeah. he was. He had a guy for everything. He had a guy for everything. <laughs> Where do you want to go? I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. He was like this old man. So you Positano in Rome, mm-hmm. the first thing you know, biggest tourist spots, right? True. But Capri. Positano is beautiful though. So beautiful. So beautiful. Oh my god. How was the food there? Like, did you get stuck in any tourist traps or? Yeah. Because that guy probably yeah. directed you to where he wanted you to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, we did. He yeah. might not send you to the best food, maybe like and he had a piece of the that action food or something. Is like more expensive. If you go into like those little like uh nonna restaurants, like you're good to go. It's five cheaper. Euros, you're eating like a king. Yo, for real. I was mm. like like the pasta was like nine dollars and it was like really, really good. So we would just order like everything on the menu and just like split it family style. Yeah. yeah. So good. Do you, but, you know, like, did you experience that um, with Italian, especially going to the motherland, that uh, food that you grew up with here thinking is Italian is not really Italian? Like the chicken parm and yeah, stuff like I that? Yeah, I mean, overall, like, everything was just so much more fresher there. Like, the tomatoes. Like, I really feel like in the vegetables, you're like, whoa, what are we eating here in America? Mm-hmm. Even the pizza is like... New, a New York slice, you'll never find anything like that. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you something that's illegal, but I actually don't really like pizza. Oh, you don't? No. I feel like every ne- time like... <gasps> neither? <sighs> Not really. Like, listen, I'll have it. Sometimes on a rare occasion, I'm craving it, but like... That's you're never going to catch though. me really waking up like, I need pizza, you know? Even I as mean, a kid, I would never have it. Really? Never. My mom would be like, come on, why can't you just be a normal kid? Yeah. It's cheap. Have a slice of pizza. Yeah, exactly. I want like... Chinese food and like, so you rather big like meals. um, a, like a Chinese food uh, dish than like over pizza? pizza, absolutely. Yeah, but you like put what, chicken what kind of in front of me, forget about it. Okay, yeah, that's what about what you pasta. Got me. Pasta every day. So, so what don't you like about pizza? You just uh, I don't know. It's just it's boring. Like it's just like a cheese a bread sauce. I don't like it. Yeah, but in Italy, the <laughs> ingredients are probably amazing. Well, right now, his friends are going ballistic. Like. <laughs> they are, because I tell any Italian that only like pizza, they get so mad at me. I mean, it's kind of hard to say you don't like pizza. It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's it's you the too? most un-American. Why does, is that American to me? I mean. No, it's un-American. Oh. So maybe I'm the real Italian in this <laughs> house then. Am I the real Italian all along? Yeah, I mean. Francesco, you see. What he would he say put, to you, like, when you didn't want pizza i mean because especially uh, in your area so there's so many options of yes good his parents always found it very inconvenient 
You're like, oh, like of pizza. course she wants to order a salad when we're all eating, <laughs> when we're all eating pizza. No, 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 no. Don't let, let me get you confused, all right? I'm not a salad girl. Chicken franchise. Like, they get a big pie of pizza and one chicken franchise order from me. With a side order of broccoli or yeah. garlic okay. and oil, a little, you know? Yeah. Or Francesca loved the linguine with clam sauce. Ma, just throw it in. She'll eat that. It's throw happy. it in. Throw it in. Yeah, but... Honestly, the one pizza uh, place that I'll eat pizza is l and I just love their pizza. That's it. Okay. I know that's A lot of people say, boring, like, their pizza isn't really... like you, It's very unique. It is, and so that's why I like it. you don't go places and see pizza like that. That's what I'm saying. That's the problem with pizza. It's boring. l and figure out a way to not make it boring. It's worth it. I mean, I actually don't... <laughs> I, I think l and like, when someone comes in uh, from an, out of town and they're like, oh, show me... Some pizza spots. I I will bring them to L and B. Yeah. Because it's not your typical New York slice. That's what I'm saying. That place you go, but I actually don't prefer it. Like, yeah, it's too saucy. Do. It's messy, and it is messy. Like, I prefer like you know mozzarella. You know, like it's not really True. any cheese on top. Why I feel like it's chunked with cheese. Yeah, but it's like grated cheese almost. It's not like uh like a New York slice. <laughs> you just pick it up and the mozzarella's like falling off. All right. That's fair that's, enough. Or what about Joe's Pizza in Manhattan? Joe's Pizza is okay. A lot of people are the saying line, that's overrated, too. Did you remember seeing it the other day? It was down the block. I'm like, what's going on for yeah, Joe's Pizza? Pizzerias are booming, right? Every pizzeria has lines yeah. down the block. Not me. I won't be on that line. <laughs> well, because now when people come visit New York, they're like, okay, what's the best of the best? <laughs> not me. You don't like the line. You're like, where's it? Where's they, the best chicken it's not even worth the line. You're telling me to wait on a line to eat bread? <laughs> so what wait, do you missing? like sandwiches or no? <sighs> okay. She I shouldn't like, like sandwiches sandwich. either. This is crazy. <laughs> I like sandwiches, but like, they're messy. I don't like it, you know, like, if I'm going to put in work to eat food, it's going to be for lobster or crabs. Other than that. What were you eating in Italy? So much fish. Yeah? Lobster, shrimps, uh, but a lot of pasta too. Yeah, I mean, Italy's known for the seafood. Well, when we were on the coast in Positano, that was really where we were eating the fish. But when we got to Rome, it was more of like the chickens and the meat. Yeah, well, Rome is also known for, like, uh, Rome, Roman-style pizza is also, like, they cut it with a scissor, and then Romans eat very, in Italy, everybody eats a certain way. Like, Sicilians eat a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, Romans, like, a lot of their dishes, like, have, like, cow tail. Like, it's weird, yeah. weird dishes, you know? Well, I also tried their gelato. It was so good. Yeah, the gelato is the mm. best. What's your favorite gelato flavor? Uh, lemon. Lemon. Yeah, it's not boring. <laughs> I just told I was all waiting that for shit. no chola, no chola, pistacchio, pistacchio, stracciatella. Lemon. Lemon. Happy I don't even think that's gelato. I think that's sorbet, to be honest. Yeah, and then also, I was telling you this before, but iced coffee, no one told me it doesn't exist in Italy. That's a crime. Well, they have like, um, like that's terrible. granita. What granita are you talking about? Because that was not where I was. I said, iced coffee, please. Ice? No, no, ice coffee together. No, you no. Need, I was like, what do you mean? No, yes. It's so but crazy no. the culture difference. Like, in over here you go for ice coffee, they put this much ice. In Italy, you go to like a bar or something. Like, can I get ice? They like put one cube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's what I did though. I ordered the ice separate, the coffee, and I just poured it in. But what kind of like an espresso? Pretty much. I feel like all their coffee was espresso. Yeah. So you would just put like. A hot espresso over ice. Yeah, and it just wasn't doing it for me, but it was the closest thing to it. At least you're getting your caffeine in. Cause, I mean, yeah. if I don't have coffee, I just can't make it through the day. Like I just crash at some point. And well, also another thing that was like everywhere was the lemoncello shots. Okay. I never had so many lemoncello shots in my life. They, they were, were good everywhere though, right? on yeah. every corner, every meal. Like after after a. Uh, you know, dinner, a little limoncello. Yeah, or like even like just walking in Positano, they're like, limoncello shot? Like on the side of the, yeah. you know, and I'm like, Because they want to okay. sell you the bottle too, right? Yeah, you could bring it home. If you take a shot, you got to buy a bottle low key because they're going to be like, eh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> GTA <true>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. But you know what? Honestly, not talking Italian almost worked a little bit too because when they would try to sell you things, I don't understand what you're no, saying. I, I don't know. I'm like know. walking away like, sorry, can't understand. What, um... Were some things that uh, you brought back from, from Italy, like souvenirs, stuff like that? Oh, okay. So I don't know if this is a good thing, but I got the boys the, a lot of tobacco. You can, like, roll your own cigarette. Um, 
And so you, all, you went to Italy to get tobacco? <laughs> okay, well, hear me out. I'm not done. <laughs> so I got tobacco, and on the bot, like on the, the thing, it's like shows like this really nasty picture. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not pleasant to buy, but whatever. They wanted to try it. It's like really popular there. And yes. then, like uh, in Italy, when you buy a pack of cigarettes, it literally shows like a lung. Yes, little. like it's like the cover of the thing, and I'm like, yeah. he's like this one. I'm like, I guess. It's Over not here, really they, pleasant. Like, if you buy a pack of cigarettes, you know, see like smoking kills. Which makes a little more sense, but the pictures disturb yeah, yeah. me. It really makes you not want to buy it, which is a good thing. But um, meanwhile, like everybody in Italy still smokes. Oh cigarettes. yeah, forget it. And then uh, like some flask. Um, at the airport, we got like pasta and a uh, sauce and some truffle salt that okay. I still use. It's so freaking good. Yeah. Um, what else did we get? I'm trying to remember. What did you see Shot in Rome? Glasses. Uh, in like, Rome. Yeah, like what? What? Uh, uh, the Coliseum, but we didn't go in. We just like... You didn't go in. Well, we did something really smart. So we got a scooter. We rented them. They're like on... You get the app. I forget mm-hmm. what the lime or something. Yeah. We were just scooting around everywhere. We were having a time of our lives. That's smart. We saw everything in one I, day. That's what... Uh, one, the first time I went to Rome, because we always go to my parents' hometown of 2,000 people, like super small town. So the first time I went to Rome, we took a bus there and then we took a bus back home at night. Okay. So it was like we were there only mm-hmm. for like... 14 hours and what i did was like i just had a cab driver and we just like he took us like everywhere and we did a lot of one day and rome is a place where like the cab driver i had that day he was like you could be here 40 years and you'll still never see every day yeah because rome to me is like the most beautiful city it's so beautiful but it is crazy with tourists yeah so i could just imagine in august like how packed There's everything so many was. People. I also just really love like the little like alleyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just so nice and beautiful. Like uh, the streets are so like uh, what is it? K like I don't know how to explain it. You know what I'm Grot talking about? Stretto, like those. Uh, like you're walking on like I don't know. The cobblestone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, everything's so been nice. there so long. Like I think that's what I really like too. It's so old school. But the only thing that I will say that there really wasn't a nightlife because I was trying to celebrate my birthday. There's really nowhere to go, which we didn't hate, but and it's Rome? definitely more. Yeah, no, there is. You probably. I guess we were talking to the wrong people. Yeah, but he said like when it's summertime, it's more for like winter their nightlife. But well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, because you know in the cities like Rome, Milan, everybody goes to beach towns <sighs> in August. Have you ever been to Milan? Yeah, oh. I've been going a lot to Milan. Really? You would you would like Milan? It's like very um. A lot of stores, fashion shopping. Yeah, exactly. Like we went for Fashion Week, and uh, how was that? It was it was crazy. Like every there night there was uh, and everybody from here was there. Oh, wow. So it was True. like it was kind of like uh, almost like you felt like you were in Miami, kind of like yeah. we're just like the the level of people that were out. Yeah. Like we we went wow. out one night, and my cousin um lives an hour away from Milan, and he really like was the one that introduced me to Italian rap. He's a lot younger. He's like 10 years younger than me. But I told him, like, yo, come to Milan because, uh, you know, my friend Sfera had a, a live show. So I remember I was, like, staying across the street from uh, where Sfera's uh, house is. And uh, he was like, what are we doing tonight? So I was like, what are we doing? What, you tell yeah, me, yeah. you know? Like, I had plans. He's like, no, no, cancel them. Don't worry. Like, you're with me. So it was like wow. me, him, another one of our friend, and my cousin. So... My cousin from Italy and Sfera, like, he sent Sfera in shotgun, and my cousin's, like, driving and trembling because he's, like, starstruck, oh. like, that this guy's with us, right? Oh. So we go to this, like, after party uh, for this fashion show, and, uh, like, we get dropped off, and my cousin's looking for a spot. Okay. So he comes in, like, 30 minutes later, because I guess he was looking for a spot. He's like, Ovisto Emily Radijowski. And he's like, <laughs> 26 million, like 26 million mean? followers. Oh. He's like, Mamma mia, come buona. Like, oh. He's like, yo, she's so hot. <laughs> and we were all like, we were all cracking up. <laughs> and that night, like, I swear, like, literally like 10 of the biggest artists in Italy were all at that party. Um, I'm not going to say any names, but somebody got punched by Future. Ooh. Like Future's <laughs> and, uh, security, future security guard. And we're just like, what? hell is going on here so then when it's time to go like <laughs> we leave this party and my cousin we're like where's the car he's like oh it's right here we walk down the block and we're with my friend Sfera and like people are stopping him taking pictures okay. and he's like where's the car One, right here right here another block 
Wait, I think it's here. Oh, so we're God. like six blocks, and we're just walking around the neighborhood. We're all like, Manaja, where the fuck <laughs> is this car? But uh, yeah, that was like, if I could say anything, like Milan that time, if you have the right invites and stuff, yeah, you was a go. great time. Yeah. I felt like in Rome, a lot of the streets looked the same. Was it like the same in Milan? Maybe that's yeah. why you lost your car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and he's from oh, there. Oh, wait, this street looks like that street. How am I supposed to know? I mean, luckily here, if I park somewhere, like, Google reminds me. True. Like, you are parked here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But um, where else would you like to visit in Italy? You said Sicily. Oh, before Venice. We said Venice, too. I want to see, like, the, the water go up to the restaurants. And the, the boats, and the, there's, like, a little... I always said I want to go to Venice too because uh, it looks wild. Or Florence. Like taking a gondola just for lo- for dinner. Or Lake Como. It's like a new uh, I go to Como. popping spot. That's where we where we went. Was it nice? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like uh, a rain. It was like a day like today. Very okay, rainy. Okay, rainy. Yeah, Empty's good. So we got to see everything. And I actually, wow. I busted my ass that day. Remember that? <laughs> What do you uh, mean? You so fell? like, no, we parked the car and there's like these metal grates and like I had some cheap like sneakers on because they were my friends, whatever. Like I supported him and like I get on these grates <laughs> and I just, boom. Oh. Like I just bust like literally like this and like 10 seconds on the ground. Well. <laughs> like Italy hit my head pretty hard. Is... I, I probably like severe brain damage. Oh my God. I haven't been the same it's since. It's all walking. Like in Positano, there's no... Elevator. No Uber. No right? Uber. Like, we got a workout in. My legs What were some are... other, like, besides the no Uber? Well, we should talk about the no Ubers. It's kind of wild. Well, right? Rome had them-ish. Well, if Where you're in the outskirts, the though, no. True. Because that's what happened to us in Milan. We uh, had a meeting where um, well, they do a lot of filming. So I want to say similar to, like, there's a lot of sets for shows and okay. stuff. So we finish uh, the meeting, and I'm like, okay, let me order Uber. First, it was like 150 bucks to go 30 minutes. But then we waited like 45 minutes for Uber. I'm just like trying to call some friends there like, yo, pick me up, pick me up. <laughs> but then the Uber finally showed up. So like they're very, uh, they don't believe in Ubers there. Or air conditioning in the Ubers. Oh, yeah. It was so hot. I mean, nobody would put on the air conditions. It was so annoying. Yeah. I, I asked I, the guy and he said, no. He said no. So what do you mean No. He said no. A lot of them feel like the air conditioning is going to make you sick. It's they crazy. should not come here then. They're <laughs> going to get very sick. And the summer we're all blasting it. Whenever the Italians come visit and they're like in Miami, they're like, I go to the Airbnbs and there's no air conditioning. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> like I pack a little towel and I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Like you sweat a lot. I'm like, yeah, I know. Can you put the air conditioning on, please? Please. Yeah, nobody. What about the desserts there? Okay, so I'm not a big dessert person. So, are you serious? I know. I'm so weird now. I feel with food. But I was getting yelled at for not ordering dessert, but maybe it was because they were trying to get the tab up. But uh-huh. they would be like, what do you guys want for dessert? And I'd be like, I'm okay. What do you mean? No, you need dessert. So I'm like, okay. So we got the tiramisu a lot, which was really, really good. You think like the tiramisu there was better or s- same thing? You can't ask me because I'm not a sweets girl. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I was asking you because I want to see if um, the comparison to like, you know, cannolis there, cannolis here. Mm-hmm, I don't like cannoli. No? No, oh my God. <laughs> why, why are we doing what, What's going on? I, I, think, I think this is the perfect time to bring um, Francesco's friends on <laughs> <laughs> while we're at it. No cannolis. We'll Come do like a quick cut. Right. Looking for a place to go out day during a week, weeknight, looking to impress a girl, looking to have a f- fun time for a birthday. Qzar is everything you want in some entertainment. You got axe throwing, you got laser tag, you got arcade, you got food, you got drinks, you got everything you want. Check out Qzar and tell them Grown Up Italian sent you. You good? We're all good on the mics. Yeah. So I have Francesco's best friends here who have saved me tremendously through all of this. Um, Miracle right here has been working alongside helping me get my life in check and He's just been the best for getting me back on social media. He is now my right hand man, and I really appreciate you. Working on the podcast, working on the podcast, awesome. on the podcast. Awesome. and this is the other Francesco who you guys went to grade school together or middle school, yeah, elementary school. Randy D. These they were the three musketeers. Before we start, what do you think about her food choices? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I never heard anybody ever say they don't like pizza. All right, well, now you did. You know what I mean? Like a nice, like from like Europa, a nice, like thin no. slice. Like Those I don't know how worse. that doesn't do it for you. <laughs> L and B is the only pizza she eats. That's 
That's kind of yeah. crazy. I know. It's yeah. like the heaviest one. It's like blasphemous. <laughs> <they're Italian. laughs> but it's worth it. What, you have a problem with me not liking pizza too? I think it's in pure insanity. Oh my honestly. god. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't even know, know why you went to Italy at that point. Just for pasta? Yes. That's yes. like the capital of pizza. You're around like the capital of pizza too. Yeah, yeah Roman, Listen, Napoli, I got Positano. By. Yeah, yeah. But I got by what I wanted it. Nobody gave me so a problem. You didn't eat pizza one time in Italy? Not one so you can't even say if it's good or Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, no, that's what I was hoping over. you weren't going to ask. That's really bad. What about if that pizza like converts you to being like, I love pizza? Yeah, you never know. And you don't even know. But then uh, then it's going to be a tease because I can only eat it in Italy, which is like never. Or you can get like Napolitan style pizza here. Yeah, right? they have it here. <sighs> Listen, Some you guys, get like, over it. I feel <laughs> like we're going to have to. This is the content guy. This is the content. P- yeah. Pizza tour. Let's try it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. There you go. Imagine <laughs> go through every yeah. city in Italy just finding find out which pizza one's the best. Caitlin likes. All right? Mm-hmm. Episode we'll one. Okay. We'll have we're, to find one. We're here. It's actually not a bad idea. Listen, we're talking content, right? We are yeah. talking content. I wonder if you would like the Chicago one, because that's like the thick, deep like dish? LMB kind Yeah, of it's right. similar to mm-hmm. LMB. It's similar like, to LMB. I'm getting familiar a lot with Chicago pizza. They uh they don't claim the deep dish. They call yeah, it tavern I heard style. About, I heard about that. Yeah. So basically, they like go to a local bar that makes pizza, which is crazy. But yeah, then they cut yeah. it like this, like in squares. Okay. So it's like a round pie. Okay. And they don't do slices. Fork and knife, right? It, no, no, no. They don't do this. They do this. <laughs> what, is, what is it, an appetizer? <laughs> yeah, you basically, you basically get a little piece, whatever. You know? Oh, my God. And it's just like drowning in sauce. No? No, no. It's like... It's not like that? It's a regular... It's like... You guys ever been to Lee's Tavern? In That's Staten in Staten Island? Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard of it. I've so, it. Lee's like makes that pizza, but they cut it normal. Okay. They normal. cut it... That's it. Yeah. One, yeah. two, three. That's funny. Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. What do you call your paper towels? Do you call it paper towel or do you call it bounty? Well, what about if it's not bounty? What about if it's uh, shards? Oh, you told me. The because Francesco brand. would call all his paper towels bounties. Babe, can you give me a bounty? What is a bounty? Do you call it that? Even it toilet a- paper if you need it? No, okay. just paper towels. <laughs> Only. But I feel, well, like, uh, I feel like it's a very Italian thing. Like, my grandma used to be like, oh, like, pass, pass to scotch, right? I'm like, what's to scotch? Scotch, scotch tape. Scotch, pass the yeah, scotch. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, uh, never heard that. They're very loyal to the brands. Very true. You know? <laughs> I guess so. You know, he loved the uh, bounty, yeah. so he only bounty in that house. So. He just assumed everything was bounty. That's kind of fun. What, what, <laughs> what funny stories do you have of uh, Francesco? I got him. I mean, you went to Sicily with him, so. Yeah, that was that was really nice. That was, uh, it was my first time in Sicily. We went to this little town. It was called uh, Isola delle Femmine. Oh, Island of he Women? Was, yes, the, the Island name. of the Women. Don't get Honestly. a man over here, right? You know? I know. Make it <laughs> easy, all right? I saw a video um, that she posted, like, uh, like getting jealous if uh, Francesco's talking to women in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I was cracking up. I want to know that. if he has a girlfriend up there. <laughs> yeah. What did you? Tell me not. Well, well, when we went to Isola <laughs> della Femmine, back on that, it was just like he planned it out. He wanted us all to go. He was in love with it. Honestly... We stayed at like one of his family members' houses, and he made sure they put two ACs in, so we didn't have that oh, problem. It wow. was oh, he <laughs> set it up. It was he phenomenal. It, it was it was it was a different experience like that. We had the little balcony, you know, have a little cigarette. Oh, why don't you tell him how you guys were all naked in in uh, aprons in there or something? Oh, uh, that was uh, a. <laughs> we listen with the little spoon. You already know he already knew what he was doing in the kitchen with the apron. He one we're, we all just got really <laughs> drunk around night. We're just running around the house, but honestly, like. It was a crazy amount of things we did. You know, go into, um, I think it's called Vucheria in like Palermo. Oh, we yeah. like travel down to Palermo and he's like, I remember him telling us like, listen guys, you know, it's a little bit dangerous over there. Make sure, you know, don't, don't bring no <laughs> rings. Don't bring no jewelry, nothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, every major city you got to watch a little bit. I got my chain like, robbed in Milan. No. Snatched. Off you like yeah. that? Yeah, one, two, three. That. I lived in Milan. There. I lived there for a year and it was kind of during the pandemic and like all the bars were closed, so all the students would like meet up in front of this church, and you know, got robbed in front of a church. Right, right, robbed in front of a church. Didn't you say like he like that's like it? that's like double worse? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said he, he like put it, he put his arm around you or something. One guy just, like, put his arm off. around me. The next thing you know, five guys were around me, and poof. it's like oh, jeez, just the chain. No, what about your just phone? The, no, 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 just the chain. Okay. 
No, nah, but he told me something over there too. He was like, "Listen, like they'll cut your cut your arm off to get your your, your watch. They don't care over there." Like, and I was like, "Okay, hey, I'll keep this at That's home." Milan you know? stories well, you were giving for, me. For, for them. No, no, I'm talking about Impa- I'm talking about in Palermo. That's oh, what I'm okay. talking about. For them, it's like life changing though to take a piece of gold like that. Yeah. You can sell yeah. it. For I feel someone. like I feel like in Europe that those kind of petty crimes are very like normal. Like to get like your chain snatched or oh. like your wallet well, stolen here, like. People just kill you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have guns in Italy. No, no. they can't get that. Not a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people don't have oh, guns. Wow. It's more, yeah. uh, especially uh, little cities. You know, more like shanking somebody or something. What about um, when you were in Sicily? You guys had a manual car, right? Yeah, we had a manual car. He oh was, man, bro, <laughs> that he, scares me. He literally said yeah. before we get there, he's like, "Oh, the manual car is like a few hundred dollars cheaper." I know how to drive manual. I remember this the first oh, the no. first day he lied. we get the car, we're driving like up a hill, right? Exactly. We're driving up a hill, he's driving, all of a sudden, yo, Francesco, what happened? Yo, we're rolling backwards. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like got a slam on the brakes. Oh my God. Almost hits the car behind us. I'm like, bro, I thought you knew how to drive a manual. He's like, I got it. Relax, relax. Oh my God. Okay. We, and then he got better, obviously, as the trip well, went Well, because on, when you go up a hill, you got to put in, like, a lower gear. Yeah, and you, you don't really know, know, know that until you experience exactly. it. You yeah. know? Sic- Sicily's filled with mountains and hills. And yeah, stuff. exactly. So, but if I go to Italy, I'll never rent a manual car. No, well, like, spend wanted, the extra 20 bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He wanted, to save, the, he wanted save to save the, money, the cash, yeah. honestly. Now it's more common, though. Like, growing up, they would never have manual, car, like, automatic cars. Mm, now a lot of people have automatic cars. I didn't know there was like a third pedal that you have to hit. Well, that's the clutch. That's the yeah. Switch yeah. Switch yeah. Switch I yeah. sat in one and I was like, oh my God, get me out of here. What's yeah, that I mean, um, summer beach party you guys are? Oh, Ferragosto. Yeah, he loves oh, that's that. August 15th. He yeah, loves Agosto. that. I remember when we went, sleeping in the tent, sleeping on the beach. It was, it was, I remember waking up and uh, all you could hear, there was some guy going around on the beach with like, uh, he had like different like sweets, Dolce and stuff. And, um, I forget what this is. There's this one thing. I forget what it's called. It's like a it's like a sugar donut type of thing. It's like huge. It's something with a C. Zeppola? Uh, no, it's something like a... Uh, Bombolone, right? I forget exactly what it's called right now. But it was the only thing because I'm allergic. I have an allergy to eggs. And over there, everything is like glazed with eggs. Got this got eggs. They're all baking stuff. So it was the one thing. I think it was called a... Oh, it's called a Chambella. Chambella is right? a, do- a Chambella, donut. Yeah, like a huge like sugar donut. And I remember just waking up like on the beach like after a long night of party and all you just got Chambella <laughs> with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the bell ringing. Chambella, Chambella. Everybody's getting out of the tents. It was the a, croissants a are super big in Italy too oh, like yeah. with Nutella. There was this one place we went to. Oh, you don't like Nutella either? No, I do. What about okay. pistachio? There's <laughs> pistachio cream too. I that's, do not like that's, pistachio. That's my favorite by far. Like late night in Italy yeah. like after a party that's where you do. You go get like... Uh, Croissant, like stuff with Nutella. Yeah, there was this one spot that we always used to go to. Um, they had like everything. They had like rice balls. They had this one thing mm. that we called it like, I don't know if we called it or they called it. It was called like a brick. And it was just like a huge rice ball, like rectangle type thing. And you know, you go to this place. Like, That's the like, most like, exciting like, thing I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah. I swear to God. I was just going to say that. And it's just like uh, everything there is like one euro. Like, you know what I mean? It was, it was crazy. Like life over there, we would go to the clubs and uh, they would call like the chiquettini, the little shots. One euro, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, bro, I got this round. You know what I mean? <laughs> Buy six dollars. Hey, take a dollar for yourself. And, you know, like, it was, uh, it's a different lifestyle over there for sure. Yeah. S- speaking of dollar for yourself, in Italy, they don't tip. No, they don't tip. I think it's great. Did you tip? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Wait, you saved some scuttles like that. <laughs> but I feel like when you're American, they kind of like you tip. expect exactly. you tipping. There's actually one story, though. The first day that we went there, there was this one place where you had like a sandwich shop, and Francesco knew the guy. And at the end, after the guy makes us all food, he's like, we, you know, we pay him. And he's just, like, standing there, like, looking. He's like, oh, Americani, huh? Americani. Like, <laughs> and, like, he was just waiting for, like, something, you know? Yeah, and then yeah. the owner came over. He's like, hey, like, what are you talking about? Leave him alone. And Francesco, you know, Francesco's always a nice guy. He's like, yeah, here, give him five euros. You know what I mean? But they really, like, if they know you're American, like, when we went there, everybody just knew. They were like, oh, Americani. Like, everybody here is American. Like, you could kind of just tell, not even from the way that you talk, but also, like, I think the way that you just carry yourself when yeah. you're walking around. Like, Not it's just much. different. It's I'll never different. forget the, f- the first time I really realized what a difference it was. We went to eat at a place, and, like, there was this kid that was serving us, and he was like, the service was top-notch. Mm-hmm. So at the end, I just give him a five and a hand, and he just, like, looks down like... <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Wow. And that, to me, I was like, wow, like, I made this kid's day, yeah. you know? The yeah. only time, when I was in Italy, the only time, like, Italians would tip... Would be if you went to a restaurant that's kind of like Patrizia's, like you know, like the family style, like they just keep bringing you food. 
that then like at the end of a restaurant like that, like that's when they would tip you. It's it's kind of embarrassing when Italians come here and don't tip. I know. Yeah, oh yeah. And we, you know, me, I think me and him both experienced it. Like, oh my god, a big bill, and then like when the waiter like chases you out, like, what happened? My bad, can I don't mind. <laughs> no, they, like, you didn't like the food. Yeah, like, what's wrong? No, the, I'm talking like, about American waiters. Like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. What happened? Yeah. The food wasn't good. Well, like, what? Was it what called? Was you wrong? know, the, you know? The, the scene from Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, Christopher when they walk out, he's like, I left the tip. He's like. Sir, you left like five dollars, something like that, and he's like oh, on a thousand dollar tip. <laughs> and he like throws the rock at him, something crazy. But oh, it's boy, true, yeah. like they don't understand it either. They're like, "Well, I'm paying for the food. Why? Why am I leaving a tip?" Like they don't understand. Like I gotta explain. Well, they to them. they think that um. Well, it is true because the, like they get a salary, so true. you get paid for that. Mm-hmm. The tip culture in America is kind of crazy now. It, it, is. it is. It is. Like I see videos. On, I saw a video on TikTok where um. Is some Uber Eats driver like ring someone's bell like you only tipped eight dollars like it was a thirty minute drive but to me like an eight dollar tip for food is pretty, pretty good. good like twenty yeah, percent yeah, yeah absolutely. maybe I'm missing something so like some people know. like you know push it extra like doing that it's crazy I remember Francesco said that the nightlife too like if to go into VIP it was like twenty dollars a person like bottles or everything he's like you live like a king oh, and yeah. here you go you try to go to Miami or Vegas five thousand dollar minimum you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just very different very yeah. different I remember when I went to Salerno one time speaking of that like we were asking they're like we don't sell the bottles like what do you mean oh wow and like, we were like trying to get like a table <laughs> yeah 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 oh, like yeah God. we'll give you a table but I'm like okay we want bottles too. <laughs> yeah. like, and, uh, you know what it was because they used to do like um, champagne or prosecco uh, but then when you're asking for like a bottle of vodka they're like whoa okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah 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 wow different very different they, I think here we, there's more of a spending culture yeah here. yeah out there, well, they're very more reserved. Well, we make yeah. more here. That's what that, that all, it also comes from. Well, that. yeah, yeah. I, I remember over there, like in in Sicily specifically, like just with cousins or friends and stuff. They really not make a lot of money on well, the, like their jobs over there and a lot of that money just gets recycled into like the nightlife all right we're going out on mm-hmm. saturday you know chikatini for everybody and yeah. that's it you but if you the shots are a dollar a euro but like it's compared to what they make that's like a five euro dollar yeah. shot here you shots know so here it's just be like eleven dollars some places you go it's sometimes 20 if you get like true like you're going yeah. 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 You're going i don't think they have i don't think they have minimum wage there think there's no well point. there's no minimum wage there and they get paid once a month mm-hmm. if you get paid if you get paid. if if your boss gives you the money oh like ask yeah. sometimes you gotta wait two three months you know yeah until <laughs> you get it yeah, like all my yeah. friends there that work some kind of jobs they like get paid once a month and think about if you only get paid once a month you pay your bills whatever you're left with has to last you a no, whole nother month yeah it's true yeah. kind of crazy wow yeah. and and i remember on, on Ferragosto, there was like a like halfway through the night, we get we're like starving and we're walking around. Like we walk off the beach. Like let's see if we can find something. There's like a food truck. I'm like, all right. Like let's see what they got. This food truck, like prime, like panini, like with the porchetta and all this stuff. Like out of a food truck, you know. And I remember it was towards the end of the trip. We didn't really have like we had spent most of our money. I only had like a hundred euro bills left. And I go to give the lady like a hundred euros, and she like looks at the bill and she's like, oh, like I haven't seen one of these in in a while. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, Wow. Your euros, like she, she's like, I, I don't have change for this. Wow. I literally had to ask somebody, like, hey, somebody's bobbing wow. for this because they, she was literally, I couldn't believe, like, a hundred dollar bill is like that. Now, God bless yeah. credit cards, yeah, true. Because yeah. now it's like everybody takes That's credit it. card. They used to have a 500 euro, but then they discontinued, yeah. yeah I remember that, yeah. Though. That's great. Imagine pulling up with 500 euros, people were faking them, yeah. it was like a whole problem. Oh they God. discontinued it, yeah, 500, yeah, 500 euros is fire. That's crazy. A fake 500 euro can get you far, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you get all that change sure. back. It's a wrap. Yeah, but sure. they, that's why people won't even take that probably. Yeah, yeah. But nobody in Italy has change. No. <laughs> they don't. Oh my gosh. They would that? beg you. Oh. They'll, they'll like, <laughs> like if you have to pay something, they'll be like, "Do you have twenty cents?" Because they don't want to like give yeah, you the yeah, full yeah, change. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, this is circulated. Like yeah. They discontinued even the pennies there. That's good though, in yeah. my opinion. It was the so small. It was like five cents or a ten cent. Something like uh, that. It was like one five. penny, like pennies and two, like they one cent and two cents. cents. Oh, now yeah. it's just the five. A lot of most countries got rid of their pennies. I feel like we're gonna except do it too. Yeah. I hope so. They've been saying it for a while, but yeah, they, I, who knows I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember you told me that it costs more to make a penny than it. Wow. Yeah, I think it's like wow. worth it's one point six. Stop making it with copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Fun. Canada got rid of their pennies a while ago. I think yeah. too. they just round to five. Yeah, yeah. makes five. it easier. 
A lot of he Italians lived in, in Canada, Canada too. He's been all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. I lived in Ottawa. So you lived for... everywhere but here. I, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Canada, after France, high school, Iran. after high school, yeah, I did France. I did all my school. I did all my schooling like abroad. I was in Canada. I did an exchange in France, and then I did a master's program in Italy. In Milan. Uh, yeah, that's nice. I wish I did stuff like that, but instead I went to college in Brooklyn. <laughs> Where'd you go, Brooklyn College? St. Francis. St. Francis. Oh. And I dropped out <laughs> like three well, times. What did you know? I uh-huh. mean, business management. That's it. That's business how I was studying. That's now now you could probably give a Italian. class there. Oh, that would be nice. I gave, I gave like a half a class at my high school. Okay, cool. Wow. Nobody paid attention, though. Where'd you go to high school? St. Right John's Prep. Astoria? Oh, it's in Astoria? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's next for you guys? We're working uh, very heavy, so we're going to make a little podcast rooms. Already nice. in process. In the process. In the process. Um, just so... Because, like I was telling you, Spotify now, you can physically put, videos. put the videos up. Did you know about that? Fires. We got to look into it. Mm-hmm. I think that, like, it's a game changer, like, physically see us speak. And then um, just keep going with that. I want to, like, share the journey of, like, kind of, like, who I'm becoming and how I got there. So just keep honoring. Everybody that's tuned in, make sure to check out her podcast. Yes, thank you so Follow much. Follow her on all socials. We'll put your thank you. everything in the description. And thank you. Thank, thank you for, for coming having today. me. Of course, of course. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Of also. course, pleasure.